Hey guys, back to doing another episode on the DIY spectrometer. So previously I've been running this just in the visible range. And as I mentioned, there is an IR filter in these webcams, just like most cameras, to block out ambient IR. And if we take out the lens on this one, and it's really going to vary on which webcam you have. They're all very similar but have slight differences. So when you take this out, you really want to be careful that nothing lands on the image sensor. Keep that really clean. And same with these lenses. I'm pretty sure these are plastic. So you could probably clean them with uh, ethanol or IPA, but definitely not with acetone. As far as solvents go. And um, this one you can see has this built-in big lens. Some of them you can unscrew this front part, but this one you definitely can't. And it has a lens in the back here. And by the looks of it, I think I should be able to lift this out by this point here. So let's give that a shot and see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, yeah, there it goes. So be careful with these parts. You know, this one's actually pretty nice. It's got this chunky plastic enclosed lens array. For the top there. And up, oh, what do you know? Huh. I guess they didn't even glue it on too well because that's already slipped off because that's definitely our piece of glass. That's the IR filter. And by the way, um, the way that filters are called in optics and in photography, it's complete opposite. So in optics, an IR filter is something that filters out, so blocks IR light. But in photography, an IR filter is something that lets in IR light and blocks everything else. So this one blocks IR light, and you can see that kind of... Um, bluish hue to it when we look at it from the front side there and that's because as you've seen probably in the previous spectra that we've measured this is also grabbing some of that uh, far red or even around 700 nanometers so if it's absorbing a little bit of the red visible spectrum to the human eye it's going to appear a little bit blue I'm guessing it's uh, some of these are ultra thin films of gold. I'm not entirely sure what this material is. Okay, so I definitely want to save that though. That's a useful uh, optical piece to have for the future. So I'm going to save that and uh, eventually I'd like to check the absorption of it. And I would guess it's, um, you know, a wide bandpass type of filter that's uh, blocking from somewhere from, I don't know, 650 to 900. In some of the other arrays, the filter might be just glued on to the corners. Again, you can use a solvent to remove that or just try to wedge it off. If you don't need it, you can break it as long as it doesn't affect the other optics. So I'm going to go ahead and put back our top lens here and this one is actually really convenient I think the way they've designed it so it just has these slots to fit in and I'm just trying not to touch the lens but get it in there evenly so now we have a UV Viz IR spectrometer all right so we got a nice line spectrum there for this compact fluorescent and all we have to do now is calibrate it relative to intensity position. So if we go to trim scale, we can see the two calibration points. We need to move those way over here so that they align with the green peak and the blue peak. Like that. Okay, so now we can unclick trim scale so we don't mess up that calibration. 
and we can turn off the peaks and what I want to do now is a little absorption measurement so a little while back on the Grokowski channel somebody had mentioned to him to use a piece of a Mountain Dew bottle as a filter for blue red or blurple LED lights so if we think about it, how that could possibly work, there's many origins of colors to material, but a transparent material, material with a light green appearance, chances are that it's absorbing blue and red photons more significantly than it is green photons, and so it's reflecting some green and then transmitting the rest. So if we want to do a little absorption measurement, we can use this reference function in Theramino. And you can see here is that it's taking the intensity of the light that it's reading and setting that basically to 100. And of course, the CFL is not a good light source for that because it has all of these gaps in the spectrum. And so that you wouldn't get a very continuous absorption spectrum out of that. So what we can do instead is go ahead and switch out the lights here for a halogen. So this is just a standard household light bulb that has a very similar spectrum to an incandescent light. They're pretty much the same. And so I'm just going to go ahead and take out the CFL and put in the halogen bulb. And let's just uh, adjust our spectrometer so that we're capturing this really intense band here. The more light we have for an absorption measurement, the better. So I'm going to move my window up to capture that. All right, so yeah, you can see we have large intensity all the way from 400 to about 1,000 nanometers using this light source, having taken out the IR filter. So let's first trim up our window so we're not seeing any light that we don't want to. Otherwise, it will come out as noise. So like that looks good. We got most of the visible spectrum here. And then we can switch to reference. And yeah, there you go. We got a nice smooth line throughout our measurement area. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just put a piece of this Mountain Dew plastic in front of the entrance slit of the spectrometer. So here we go. All right, and there you go. Let's turn on the dips, which will basically label the minima in the spectrum now. And the peaks you can think in an absorption spectrum basically is upside down. So here's a peak here at 451. There's a good one at 615 and a very large one at 682 where light is being absorbed by the material and not being transmitted through. Whereas right at 550, right in the bulk of the green, you can see all of that light is coming through along with IR light as well. So it seems like it's filtering out red a bit more preferentially than blue, but they're pretty close. And then you got this orange peak as well. So yeah, as far as using a piece of this material to filter out full spectrum or blur pole LED lights and try to normalize the way that the plants look under that, that could make sense. Of course, the possibility here now is that you're going to take away a lot of the red and some of the blue, and the resulting image will probably look a bit greener than you expect. All right, just for fun, let's go ahead and put another layer of this Mountain Dew plastic material on there. And as with any transparent material, we would expect that the intensity in the regions that are being filtered out would drop and the intensities in the green, for example, should still stay high. So here we go with that. All right, and there you go. We got pretty much 682 completely removed, and the blue intensities seems to be uh, almost gone as well. And again, we have a peak at around 420 and one around 450 for that. Right around 
the intensities you would expect that LEDs actually produce that are used to then pump the phosphors to get the higher wavelength light as well. So yeah, it would be quite efficient to filter out that blue band you get from LEDs. All right, so let's go ahead and go for a third layer here. And there you go, still plenty of green. We're seeing the, a small peak that wasn't as obvious before, right around 500, uh, 573, and the 614, 615 ones become more obvious. And then there's a shoulder to this red one around 650 as well. And you can also see that reflected in the line spectrum here. We got a obvious gap in the red and in the blue. All right, guys, so there you go. So the spectrometer is working great. And again, like I've mentioned before, you know, we're just kind of scratching the surface of what's really possible with this tool. We can measure absorptions of liquids and make suspensions of various compounds in those liquids and measure absorption of organic compounds and do all sorts of stuff. So coming up, I've got some really exciting giveaways based around the spectrometer, using it to kind of randomize things and uh, to do a little contest. So stay tuned for that. That should be out in a couple days. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Keep on growing.